The shared economy started in 2014 with 14 billion in revenue and is projected to be at 335 billion by 2025. That's quite an increase. It is. It's it's huge. And as we'll discuss later on, you know what we think we know about the shared economy and what the average person knows about it is it's quite different than the reality of it. Absolutely. Some of the things that you might be familiar with are Airbnb, VRBO, Uber, and Lyft. But here are some newer trends. We have Turo, which is renting out your vehicle by the hour. We have Boat Setter renting out your boat by the hour. Outdoorsy is renting out your RV by the hour, which is becoming increasingly popular. Swimply and Sniff Spot. Well, let's talk about Swimply for a moment. Dozens of pools for rent in St. Petersburg today by the hour and Sniff Spot renting out your yard for somebody to bring their dog. You know, with the, the gig economy really taking off pre-COVID and then post-COVID, the introduction of now renting out almost access to everything that you might have. And there's ones beyond what you've talked about, cars and boats. You know, we, we were all familiar with Airbnb and the traditional, you know, fractional ownership or sharing of these assets. But having a dog come to your backyard to do their business for a paid fee, that's a new one. It is, certainly is, Peter. So how regulated is the share economy legislation and how can it differ by the community, Peter? Kim, I wish there was an easy answer, but it really depends. For instance, some of the auto policies will uh, exclude coverage for livery service. You can't share a car for, for a fee, it's excluded. Some of the home policies, it may target a business exposure. It may not be covered, but there may be some ancillary coverages that the underwriters are really taking a hard look now because quite frankly, the personal lines policy and the personal lines product hasn't really caught up to this economy. So what additional exposures and hazards may there be? You know, when, when I think about potential exposures, I think the swimly and renting out your pool in your backyard comes to mind. And if you go to a, uh, a public pool for a fee, access the pool, look around you. There's dive warnings, there's depth signage, there's safety equipment, there's typically a lifeguard in place. None of that really exists on, on the home property. So although the, the home pool is designed for people from the backyard, typically the occupants and their immediate guests, it's a different exposure when you bring in the commercial aspect of it. So the requirements of maintaining commercial pool may still apply to the legal exposures of renting your pool out to guests in a bitees. So let's talk about Turo, where you have the opportunity to rent your car out by the hour. Yeah, uh, it, it's a really unique exposure. And you know, Turo is quite a bit different than Lyft and Uber, which are really uh, more refined businesses. But with Turo, for a fee, you can rent out your car. Quite frankly, most auto policies will specifically exclude this. The intent is it's going to be you as the vehicle owner, or maybe occasionally somebody else using your car, never intended to be rented out for hire. And the exposure is real because if that car doesn't have insurance coverage, you're the owner of the car, you're going to have some legal liability for that. So Peter, are there insurance products today that are out there to help protect my personal wealth from these exposures? So the answer, Kim, is maybe. And I, I know that that's a, a bit of a cop-out, but quite frankly, the personal lines policies weren't really developed or predicted these types of exposures. Many of them may stumble onto coverage for this, but as far as dedicated products with these exposures in mind, I haven't seen one yet. Excellent. Share a little bit more about negligent entrustment and negligent supervision exposure that comes into play with the shared economy. Yeah, so negligent entrustment, negligent supervision, what does that really mean? And I'll give the example of um, a fast boat. So you rent out your boat to somebody, or even today, let's say you're not even renting it out, you just give the keys to a buddy of yours, here, take it for a swim. If that boat is really powerful, boats don't have brakes on them, boats typically do not have an easy reverse on them, but if that person is operating that uh, high-speed equipment, they're not trained, they're not educated, and they're not experienced to really be operating that, something happens, not only can you be faced with exposure as being the owner of that, but you may have negligently entrusted or you may have given this someone that really shouldn't have been operating this, or you may have provided lack of supervision that you should have known better than to let somebody that is inexperienced use this piece of equipment, that can create some additional exposure against you as well. So can you share with us the best advice you have to anyone seeking to participate in the shared economy? 
uh, Kim, I'm not an expert as to what to do and how to do it, but I can enlighten us all as to the potential exposures that this shared economy may have. It comes with some risks, and the, the short-term gains or the, the monetary gains you may get from renting out your backyard or a swimming pool or a tennis court or a lawnmower or, or a bicycle uh, may be crushed by the liability exposures that have been created as well and potential insurance gaps also. So how to go about it? I think it's still evolving. Best practices around it, definitely still evolving. An insurance product, still working on that one, but really have to be aware of the exposures that are created and the financial risks that you really can stumble into by renting out some of this stuff.